Okay, well, we are here with, uh, with Tom from BJB, and Tom was kind enough to join me. Tom is a scientist, or more specifically, a silicone chemist, correct? Is that right, Tom? Uh, yes, yeah, the chemist over here, yeah. So Tom is uh, gonna drop some knowledge on us about thickening agents and silicones, because that was something that had come up lately about how silicones age and do thick, thixotropic additives contribute to the aging of silicones and, and that sort of thing. So I thought I would just cut to the chase and go to the expert. So Tom was kind enough to join me for this. So Tom, uh, that's kind of the general idea of the question that was posed in a forum was about the long-term effects of using something like the SC5001 the exact example was I had made a brush on mold using the 5130F from you guys, um, thickened it for a brush on application with the SC5001 thickening agent. So, okay, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for asking me. You know, I love getting the chemistry questions. So, um, yeah, uh, in general, uh, you know, thixotropic additives and viscosity modifiers. Um, are, are pretty widely used in, in the industry, right? Um, uh, and generally, they fall into two major categories, one, one being inert and, and uh, one being reactive. Uh, so essentially, this uh, SC5001 is, is a more reactive uh, thixotrope material. Um, and really, you could call it a viscosity modifier. It's, it doesn't allow for sheer thinning, um, and that's the... That's the key difference between thixotrope and viscosity modifier. Um, so viscosity modifier, you will increase your viscosity, right, as a whole. And so that material, as you know, as a material starts to cure, it begins to thicken more and more and more. Um, this doesn't necessarily accelerate the curing process, but it gives you that more instantaneous thickening, right? But as you as you continue to mix it, it doesn't it doesn't change viscosity again, right? It, you know, as you're mixing in that thixotrope, you hit your your desired viscosity, and then as it cures, it'll thicken, right? And that's just the natural process of um, of the uh, silicone reaction, right? And so, yeah, in this case, the SC5001 shouldn't really affect your your physical properties um, with silicones, and so that's the important part uh, about reactive materials. Reactive materials are generally designed to go with the specific chemistry. And so you will see reactive uh, thickeners for silicones. Um, in this case, you would have platinum silicones or tin silicones, or your most common uh, RTV chemistries, right? And so in this case, the SC5001 is a, uh, is a platinum, uh, you know, platinum silicone chemistry, right? So if you added that to something like a tin silicone, uh, it wouldn't have the same desired effects. In some cases, you 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 could get some viscosity enhancement, um, but you won't uh, you won't necessarily get that. And and in many cases, you'll you'll probably start to impact in, impact your physical properties. The SC five thousand one. Hopefully, my camera machine is capturing that label there, right? That, that but, there. Yeah, there. But uh, this one is designed for like the fifty one thirty and the your one-to-one -one systems correct is that that is official canon for uh, yes. the platinum one-to-one -one yes. systems okay in the one-to-one -one systems right you 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 have a a little bit more of a <laughs> wiggle room uh than the 100 to 10s um so with the 100 to 10s your activator content is so low um it's a very concentrated activator so adding the 5001 can have some weird effects in that uh, in our 50 series or you know our, our, our 50 30s, uh, the 50 40, 50 41, you know 50 50. So that's why we don't explicitly state it in our uh, TDS. Uh, but with our one to one system, it works very well with uh, thickening. So, okay. Well, I, yes, I have had great success with it in all of those formulas except. The 5100, the low viscosity, the really yeah. low, the um, the one that's like a 0020 or 25. Yeah, with that, that one, you've got really, really long chain, 
you know, uh, sign lanes in there. And so the reactivity itself is fairly touchy. So with that one, you're, you're, you might want to use a, a, a bulk filler um, versus using an, you know, an active uh, dixotrope in that one. You know, active thickener like the 5001. Um, and then we have like a non-reactive, which would be like your fiber thick or yeah. uh, fumed silica stirred in. And yeah, there, 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 and there's, there's a ton of, you know, there's a ton of them. Um, most of the time you're going to see them coming from a, you know, manufacturer of the product. So, you know, if you're, if you're trying to take one manufacturer's, you know, thickener and put it into another manufacturer's product, you, you might have to, you might, you know, you might have to refer to the manufacturer for that or do your own testing. Um, because a lot of the cases there's, there's a different chemistry going on. Um, you know, uh, if they don't explicitly, you know, tell you what type of silicone <laughs> your silicone thickener, like I said, uh, is used for that, that can play a role. A major reason to avoid this. If I'm making a brush on mold, any reason I would use that, uh, say fiber thick over uh, the official uh, thixotrope for that? Or um, I, I guess there's there's no specific reason to to avoid the, you know, SC5001 and, you know, that um, if you wanted to bump up the viscosity really, really high, right, from a lower viscosity material, then, then you can play with both, um, right? So if, if you're trying to do a brush on, um, and you are at a point where you're building a large volume of material, um, yeah, you might you might want to throw in some some bulk filler on that outside, you know, on that final layer where you're trying to build the you know whatever volume you need, because <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. that bulk filler will 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 provide volume, right? Whereas this viscosity you know viscosity modifier, the SC5001, you know, you're using that at less than a percent uh, of the of the total mass. Whereas with bulk filler, you know, you can go up five, five or so percent. And it's very, it, it's lower density. So you're giving yourself more volume, you know, with the cheaper material, right? So that that that's kind of where it, it, it becomes a balance of, uh, of, you know, getting perfect physical properties and kind of doing what you're, the, the purpose of bulk filling is, which is, is making the product less expensive. I've got uh, a, a wide variety of people doing poured molds, brush on molds and that sort of thing. And um, and I've been using this to great success in F5110 regular, 5130F, 5140 and 5150 all with you know great results. Um, so, and then of course, as you mentioned, you have then the, the non-reactive option of something like fiber thick or fume silica mm -hmm. added into those formulas as well if you want to create greater bulk uh, without having to use a ton of uh, thick soap. Yeah, yeah, that, that pretty much summarizes it. Yeah, the fiber thick is a pretty, pretty universally uh, usable material. Um, and then that, that SC, uh, the 5001 will be will be with the 5100 series, uh, you know, platinum silicones. One of the things I really wanted to address with this conversation is a lot of times in the, the world of molding and casting, uh, it's very compartmentalized. There's a lot of guys that work specifically in one, you know, very narrow spectrum of the trade and they know the things relative to that. And so that's where it really helps to have your input uh, about these chemical specifics, but what that results in is a lot of kind of shop superstition about, mm -hmm. well, so-and-so used this and it did this bad thing, um, so we don't use that. And I ran into that a lot back when some of the thickening agents first started coming out and being commercially available to guys like me. Um, this was like witchcraft to uh, a lot of guys that had not seen this sort of thing before. Um, so that's the main thing I wanted to do is try to dispel that and really get to the, you know, the compatibility bedrock, so to speak, of this. And knowing you guys are available, obviously, I'm not going to uh, steer traffic to you. Know, I know you have better things to do than discuss uh, 
uh, compatibility of thickening agents on the telephone machine all day. But uh, the main thing I wanted to do here is try to dispel some of that shop superstition. And, you know, when in doubt, go ask the uh, ask you guys. Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, yeah, I mean, the the, the specialization um, is is really is really beneficial, right? You know, uh, someone who's worked with it for, for 20, 30 years, um, they really know what they're talking about when working with the materials. But in some cases, you know, there are, uh, there are new products that, uh, that can be, you know, um, that can be brought to them. And yeah, they, they, it's not what they're used to seeing. Um, and so some of them can, you know, some people, you know they they don't like new things um and a lot of shops see that and so uh yeah um if uh if people are trying to introduce a new product into their uh you know into their repertoire uh they uh they're more than than welcome to to come ask us questions um you know our our tech you know our tech sales team is, is really really knowledgeable they're they're guys who have been doing this you know for 30 years um you know 20 30 years uh so they uh they have the expertise too um and so they can give a lot of um you know a lot of feedback and a lot of help to people trying to to use these new products um and yeah if if, the, if it's a weird question uh <laughs> they'll they'll throw it my way you know someone will someone will ask me and uh you know if uh if i can't answer it outright you know i'll test it um you know I'll, the I'll uh, superstitions uh around well, and, and guilty as charged, like I, I'm, I'm the same way. I started in an art bronze foundry and there were things that we would do that were official canon in that shop that once I saw the world outside of that, I realized a lot of that was a uh, very localized shop superstition about certain things that that's the way it was always done. And like you said, there's some, sometimes that is with very good reason. And then other times it's, uh, uh, it's grown up around maybe a very special set of circumstances. So, yeah, yeah. I mean that. I mean that's bound to happen in a lot of places. You know, you find something that works and you you want to run with it. Um, and yeah, when a lot of times when you try something new, there there might be like a hiccup or there might be something unexpected. So, you know, getting people past that stage and and implementing the new product is the key. Test, test, test. I appreciate your your knowledge on this, and uh, if it's cool with you, I'll probably be bugging you some more about more things along those lines because you guys have a lot of additives that up until now I haven't explored, like the SC40, the mm -hmm. polyurethane thixotropic additive or viscosity modifier. Uh, there's a lot of those things that I haven't played with and I want to play with and share the results with the uh, with the the general public. So. Um, so thanks again for your knowledge and, uh, I'll probably be bugging you again, but, uh, I appreciate that. I will move forward and try to be as compatible as humanly possible. And, uh, uh, I'll, I'll I need to get a little, uh, Tom Saint candle that I can spark up whenever I'm testing some new things. So, yeah, can... I, I don't know about a Saint candle, but, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but no, in yeah, all seriousness, yeah, yeah. No, I, I appreciate your, your, uh, your info on this and I'd like to pick your brain again, if something else comes up and I appreciate you being willing to, uh, share your knowledge with the YouTubes. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Thanks for having me. And thanks for asking the questions. You know, I love, uh, discussing chemistry and, and um, discussing how things work in general. So yeah, yeah. Any, any questions you have come up, uh, more than happy to answer them and discuss them. Excellent. Tom, thanks a lot. And uh, yeah. catch you on another another call, another video sometime. Thanks a lot. All right. Sounds good. Have a good one. Okay.